again, it's good to be back with you. Today I want to talk about something really cool. I want to do the dynamics of a pogo stick. Okay, I've got my pogo stick right here. This is big. Here we go. This is, there's not much to this thing. There's a piston here that goes back and forth and there's a big old spring going up the middle of it here. It's fixed at this end and can, can uh, it's free to move at this end as this piston goes up and down. And then my feet go here, all right? Um, the parkour people, you know, these folks that run around and climb buildings and walls and things like that have discovered pogo sticks. And so now instead of pogo sticks being the really cheap sort of tinny things they had when I was a kid, the, the kind I learned to ride, now they're pretty good. Now the, 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 you can't do a backflip on a bad pogo stick. So uh, thank you parkour people for uh, forcing the market to, or encouraging the market to make something like this. This one is rated for 100 kilograms. Okay, I'm about 93, 94 kilograms, a little over 200 pounds. So this fits me pretty well. Um, and if this isn't dynamics, man, I don't know what is. So let's think about what's going on when this thing is uh, in operation. Okay, if I step on this thing and just hold still statically, this spring will only compress a little bit, okay? This spring is stiff enough that it doesn't have to compress very far to hold my weight. Yet, I'll show you later, I can make this hit that. I can bottom this thing out. And if I'm going to be able to bottom this thing out, it must be more than a static load. It must be the dynamic load that's doing it. And so we'll, I'll show you that here in a few minutes as well. Um, let's, let's, let's try to figure out what's going on with this thing. If I'm on the pogo stick and not moving, now it's pretty hard to do, but let's just say somehow it's, it's stable. When the, the pogo stick, the spring compresses about that far, that's just enough force to, to uh, resist static load, just basically support my weight. When the pogo stick is in operation, that's not what's going on, okay? I, when I jump up and down, when I get to the very bottom of my travel, I've got no velocity and I've got the spring compressed pretty far, okay? That energy eventually turns into uh, uh, kinetic energy on the way up and then, I, then the pogo stick goes up. So let's see if we can at least in words maybe write down what's going on. Let's, let's, may, let's maybe start with a, a, a math model, a little a, a model of what's going on. Well, here's, you know, here's the piston maybe, and there's the little uh, puck or whatever that thing is at the end. And there's a, there's a spring in here, okay, very stiff spring, at least for on a human scale. And the pogo stick weighs a little bit. It doesn't weigh a lot, okay, there, MS for stick, pogo stick. Well, this in itself is not a very sophisticated system. It's just a spring and a mass. And there, there's, it's not really a damper in here. There's friction in here, but it's not uh, proportional friction. It's just, it's uh, uh, probably some other kind of damping. We'll ignore that for now. So if, if we just did this, and you know, if I could just bounce this off the floor. It's not very hard to do. I could sit there and do that all day long. That's just the system. But when you put me on the thing, now all of a sudden it gets pretty complicated. Well, I've got legs. Uh, that's why I'm standing up right now. And my legs can have a stiffness. So there's K, my legs, there's K of this, this pogo stick. And there's my mass, mass of Mark. Okay, so that's, then that's big. This thing is heavy, but it's not that heavy. It weighs, I don't know, few kilograms, five. The fact that I can sit here and hold it out like this, it's not that heavy. I'm, like I say, about 100 kilograms. Hang on, I dropped my pen cap here. Okay. Um, this is around 95 kilograms. This is about, I don't know, I guess about five kilograms, so it's small. Okay, now, I don't know what the stiffness of my legs is, but my, my legs aren't just a spring. They can generate a force, too. And so I can accelerate myself upwards. There's a force in there that by accelerating myself upwards, the, the reaction force is pushing down on the pogo stick. So this is actually a fairly complicated system to try to, uh, to analyze. So let's, let's, in, in words, let's see what's going on. So at the bottom, well, at the bottom of the travel, I've got spring energy only. Okay, I've got 
that spring energy. From the very top, when I'm off the ground, okay, and I'll put that over here. Top of travel, okay, off the ground, okay. I'm in the air. I mean, there's, there's a spring. The, the thing's not in contact with the floor, so there's no spring energy. Um, at the very top of my travel, there's no kinetic energy either. There's only potential energy. Okay, so put that in there. I'll get out of the way so you can see it. So I've got potential energy. Well, how in the world do you get from there to there? If I were to just stand on the pogo stick and maybe bounce once and then just hold still, and I would stop moving fairly quickly. In order for this to become a system that not only goes that way but then comes back again, something else has to go on, okay? Okay. Work done by, what do you call the occupant of a pogo stick, a rider? I guess I'll call rider. Okay. Work done by the rider. I'm pushing myself up, partially compressing the spring, but also pushing my body up and giving my body motion too. So this is a fairly sophisticated process and that, that puts extra energy in and comes back around like that. Okay. So that's pretty much what's going on. It would, this would make a very interesting analysis. Definitely differential equations, definitely biomechanics, lots of interesting stuff here. Big, big, big damping. My body, lots of damping, okay? This, not so much, okay? So we can talk about this two ways. We can talk about it the abstract boring way. Well, not boring maybe, but the abstract way. Yeah. Or we can talk about this the concrete, uh, let, let's go try it experimental way. I don't know about you, I would much rather do that. So let's go try it, okay? Okay, so here we are out in the lobby of my building and I've got this cool stainless steel wall behind me so maybe that'll make a good backdrop for this whole thing. Um, I'm going to start by trying to stand on this thing and holding still. Now I'm only going to be able to do this for just a split second. But you'll get a kind of an idea of how far this uh, uh, spring will compress under my weight as long as I'm holding still. And look down here, this is, this is where you can start, you can see the um, uh, change in length of the spring. Okay, so I'll stand here for just a second, a quick second. Oops, it's harder than it looks. Okay, so it only, you know, this much, something like that. Let me try one more time. Okay, very little compression due to the due to static loads. Now, if I go to dynamic loads, okay, I can make this spring compress a lot farther. So let's try this. was pretty easy. I quit putting energy into it. In fact, I absorbed energy. If I do this, watch. I start bouncing and I want to stop. See? I can just stop. So that's how you do that. I'll shoot a video. <laughs> okay. okay, got a problem now. Now I've got a witness. Now, how far can I make this thing go? I mean, how far off the ground can I get this thing? And in particular, is it pot possible to bottom the spring out. Can I compress the spring so far that this part here will hit that part? It's just, it just can't go any further. Yeah, I can. And the way I'm going to do this is when I get to the bottom of the stroke here on the spring, I'm going to be down like this and I'm going to push up with my legs. I'm going to exert a dynamic load. Okay, so ready? sideways there. But what you saw was me bottoming the spring out. I got all the way to the bottom and then uh, when I wanted to stop I have started to absorb the energy using my body. So taking the energy out of the spring and taking the kinetic energy away and 
the uh, motion stop. So there you go. I bottomed the thing out a couple of times, brought it to a stop. Now I wasn't quite vertical when I came to a stop, so I started to tip over. But the spring didn't have any energy in it other than just maybe my weight when it's, we started to tip over. So there you go. That's the dynamics of a pogo stick. Um, I hope you found this helpful, and I'll talk to you next time.